welcome there. Uh, yeah, so welcome again. We're, tonight we're going to be discussing how to wholesale, assigning real estate contracts for quick profits, and just wanted to go over a few ground rules before we begin. Um, so as usual, if you guys have any questions at all during the presentation, um, please just go ahead and type them in the chat box below on the right side of your screen. And, and if you're on Facebook, you can go ahead and leave a comment, and then we'll get to that in the order received near the end. We're going to have a section later. And we're also going to be having uh, some special announcements later, so please stick around for that. So yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Please allow me to introduce the founder of Yan Lam Academy, as well as the owner of Fortune Homes, Mr. Yan Lam. Yan, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you very much for the warm welcome, Nicholas. And thank you very much for joining me on this wonderful evening to talk about wholesaling, okay? So as the presentation comes up here, I tell you, if you're brand new to real estate investing, wholesaling is the best way to get started because it involves no financial risk whatsoever. The only risk that you have is your time and sweat equity, okay? So um, I'll tell you guys, one of my bet, one of the biggest attractors of wholesaling and even real estate uh, investing in general is that you can literally do this with no experience and also no capital, which is exactly how I got started. And I can be a testament with conviction on how to get started without any experience or capital. Okay, so so for those who don't know me, my name is Jan La. My background is in engineering. I, I went to school for engineering, got my bachelor's, got my master's in engineering, and uh, you know started climbing up the and I'm finding up, finding America was not my thing. I was not making enough money to where I could um, achieve all my financial goals, which included retiring my wife, retiring my family, I'm sorry, retiring my, my parents, and then being the stay-at-home parent to take care of them the way I want to, especially in this day and age with the coronavirus pandemic going on. Uh, started real estate part-time about 10 years ago. Within two and a half years, replaced my full-time job and been doing this business full-time ever since then out of the comfort at my home, uh, with the exception of going to properties for visits and also site inspections and management. So, so with that guys, let's go through into wholesaling, okay? First of all, you know, you gotta be good at analyzing the deal to see what you can do as an exit strategy, especially when it comes to wholesaling. So what kind of information do you need about the property in order for you to properly analyze it? Okay, number one, you gotta obviously know the number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, okay? The total finished square footage and also unfinished square footage, and you can get all this information from public tax records. The address and subdivision, because each subdivision may be different. If it's in an HOA, some HOAs are more attractive than others, and therefore causing the property to either be worth more or less based on the management of that HOA. The year built, the lot size, the um, lot type, condition of properties and also comparables, okay? So once you have that information, what you wanna do is take a look at what's sold in the last six to 12 months in that area and you determine what you think the house will sell for once it's been fixed up and renovated, okay? Renovated means new kitchens, new bathrooms, new carpet, new paint, refinished hardwood, recessed lights and things of that sort that makes it look fresh again, okay? So those are the types of things um, that uh, those are the types of things that you'll need to be able to determine the, the, the comps and the, figure out the ARV, okay? So once you have that information, all right, here's an example of how you can calculate what kind of target purchase price that you need to offer to the seller to make this deal worth it for you, okay? So once you have the comparables, you're going to determine the after repair value based on what I mentioned already. After repair value, let's say in this example here, it's $500,000. And based on the repairs needed, you know, based on the square footage, you can actually use our system within the academy to determine how much the renovation will cost based on the size of the house and also the age of the house. So in this example here, let's assume the repairs will be estimated at $50,000, all right? Using a formula of ARV minus repair costs, take that number and multiply it by 70%, you get a target purchase price number of $315,000 that is designed for fix and flippers, okay? So what a wholesaler does is that they get something under contract under the price of what flipper will be willing to pay. 
Okay, so if you have a fix and flipper willing to pay $315,000 for it, then that means you need to negotiate below $315,000 and whatever the spread is, will be your wholesale fee for finding a deal, negotiating deal, and then assigning the contract on to the fix and flipper for their price that they're willing to buy that, okay? So let's say you have a target wholesale fee of $15,000. That means you need to convince the seller that you want to buy the house at $300,000 and then later on you sell for three fifteen dollars to a fix and flip investor, all right? So once you have that information, now you got to understand how to write the contract. You see, if you guys have purchased properties before, whether it be your primary residence or whether it be a rental property or other properties, you guys know that in order to buy a property, you have to put that property under contract, okay? Now, if you're accustomed used to using an agent, then you're probably using the state real estate board regional sales contract. And those contracts could be 16, 20, maybe 30 pages long with all the addendums included in there, okay? So as a real estate investor, your value proposition when working with a seller is that your, your contracts are much simpler and easy to understand. Instead of using the real estate agent's contract, which is too long and a lot of the language is not applicable for our purposes anyways, we use a two-page contract that when you literally read it, it's in plain English without legal jargon and they don't need an attorney to understand it, okay? It's very simple and most sellers are like that and they're willing to work with someone with a very simple contract, no fine print. In fact, all the print in our contract is the same font size, okay? So there's no big print and there's no small print. Okay, so the information that you'll need to be able to put together a contract is the agreed upon purchase price, very obvious, the title holder's name. Now, if you're talking to one owner, you might want to pull tax records to see who else is on title. It could be the other, the, the person's, it could be another sibling somebody else, all right? What you want to do is ensure that everyone on title in the tax records is also there on the contract, okay? And for yourself, when you write the contract, you're not going to put the contract in your name as a buyer. You're going to put it under your LLC's name, Limited Liability Company, so that way you protect your assets, okay? Now, once you put the name of the buyer, your LLC's name, at the end of it, after the name, you want to also include the language and, slash, or assigned. And that's what makes everything on the contract assignable, okay? And of course, number four, you can put the legal description of the property along with the address and earnest money deposit. Yeah, it could be as little as $10, but it doesn't have to be much more if you don't have to, okay? So don't waste money or don't have, you know, put more money than you need to when putting deposit on the contract. Of course, you want to put a title company name and ensure that you use a title company that is investor friendly and you know for a fact that they have done contract assignment before. Otherwise, they may mess up your entire deal and don't because they don't understand the proper etiquette, okay? Settlement date. Now, the value proposition for you as an investor is that you will be closing fast. Unlike if you put it on the market, it may take two weeks to get a contract and then another four to five days for the thing to close because the buyer needs to get a mortgage, get a home inspection, and then get an appraisal. You don't need to do any of that. So that's why you can close within two weeks or less. Okay. Of course, the withdrawal clause and all the signatures of the title holders and you representing the LLC. And you're signing on behalf of the LLC and you're not signing on behalf of yourself. Okay. So moving on to the next slide here. Okay. So once everyone signs, then now the contract is considered what we call ratified. Okay. Ratified is, is fully binded and executable and fully enforceable in the court of law. Okay. So once you have a contract ratified, all right. You're not going to be buying the property because your goal is to wholesale the property and assign the contract. So now that you have it ratified, what you want to do immediately is start advertising that deal at your desired sales price for fix and flip investors to your list of buyers. Okay. So in order for you to build a list of buyers, you got to know a lot of fix and flip investors who are investing in the area that you're marketing to. So in order to attract good fix and flippers, especially the ones who experience and do this for a living, they do 10, 12, 13, 15 deals every single year, and they've been doing it for the last decade, that's their core business. And those are the people that you want to work with because they know what they're doing. And you know for a fact they're credible and have the cash to close, and they're not a newbie. So in order to attract these kinds of people, you got to, first of all, be professional and present yourself well and knowledgeable, okay? The last thing you want to do is send them something 
with the wrong renovation estimate, with the wrong ARV, and now you discredit your own self because you had the wrong information on that property, and that investor will no longer want to work with you and think that you're a joke. That's the last thing you want to do. First impression is very important. You can attend networking events like ours. Now, traditionally, if we're not virtual, if we're, we were at a regular meetup like we've done before, before uh, COVID, then you can meet other people and build your network. Now, in our day and age, because we're doing things virtually, you can go through our Facebook page. You start meeting other members on Facebook, join a group, and start talking to people to see who are fixed and flip investors. So that way, you can go ahead and build your own network. Do your own proper due diligence on your analysis and also understand if you do meet a fix and flip investor, know what their buying criteria are. Are they focused on a particular county? Are they focused on a particular zip code? Are they focused on a particular price point? Okay, whatever it may be, if you know that criteria, it will help to be able to advertise to the right people so that way you don't waste people's time. Okay, moving on. So once you know, so that's one way to build your network, okay? The other thing is to work with us. Now, we've been doing this for the past 10 years. We have a network of over 750 end buyers in multiple states, okay? Um, and you can just use us, and we will be able to more than happy to market the deal with you uh, to be able to guarantee a buyer, especially if the numbers work. Now, if you follow the formula and the numbers work, we guarantee you we're going to find you a buyer, okay? But if you messed up on the numbers, then we may not be able to find a buyer. But again, the numbers work. There's no reason why we cannot find a buyer for you to be able to sell your contract. And of course, or you can start from scratch and develop your own network of buyers. And I don't know about you guys, but I hate starting. There's something that's already built that you can, why not leverage off that? So that way you can speed up your success process. Okay. Moving on to the next slide. All right. So when you sell your contract, what do you do? How do you get people interested in your property? Well, what you want to do is that if the house is vacant, or even the house is not vacant, if it's currently owner occupied, what you wanna do is set across a time, a two hour window to where you can have an open house to get bids on the property. So preferably when the owner is not there. So let's say the owner's at work or the house is vacant, the owner's long distance, whatever the case may be, you want a slot of time of two hours when the house is vacant and you need to get access to the house. You can let the seller know that you're just getting bids, which is true, okay? You have a whole bunch of people go in and out of the house, all right? Take a look at it, take pictures, go in there with the contractors and do whatever they need to to understand the renovation uh, scope needed to be able to get the house retail ready, all right? And once you're done, then hopefully by the end of the open house with the next business day, you'll have, if you priced it well, you'll have some offers in your email box that you can choose from and you can have them compete with one another, especially if you have multiple offers and you price it very well. If you did not price it very well, then that's called a clue. You had to go back to your numbers and the drawing board to see what went wrong and potentially renegotiate with the seller to get a better deal so that we can offer to investors at a better price if that's the case, okay? So once you do have a buyer, let's assume you do have a potential buyer now, what you need to do now with that potential buyer, we call that the rehabber, is that have a separate assignment contract between you and that fix and flip rehabber. And once you execute that, what that's gonna do is that the original sales contract that you executed between you and the homeowner will now be assigned to the rehabber, okay? So it moved, you know, so the contract was with you, but once you signed the assignment, it moved over to the rehabber. So now the rehabber is obligated to, to the terms of the contract because it's been assigned to them, okay? So here's what happens to settlement. Once the day of settlement comes, the rehabber, whether they use their own cash or use a hard money lender or whatever that may be, wherever the money comes from, doesn't matter, okay? Money is coming to the title company to buy the house. All right, so whenever you have money, the rehabber, you see here a power money there, that's going to be sent to the title company, okay? And once the title company gets everyone to sign documents and then records everything with the local county or city, then now the seller will get their proceeds in their account through wire or through a cashier's check. And then at the same time, the wholesaler, which will be you, will also be getting a wire or a cashier's check to you from that wholesale fee, okay? So if you notice here in these three scenarios, we have created a win-win-win situation. The fix and flip rehabber is happy because they got a new deal to work with for them to generate profit on. The seller is happy because they now have an unwanted property off their books and they can move on with their life. The wholesaler is happy because they did the marketing effort to negotiate, assign the contract, and now they got a wholesale fee. All right, so with that, everybody is happy. Win, win, win. You can't get any better than that, okay? So 
you know, this is a quick highlight and review of the, what the process looked like. Um, but you know, how much profit can you truly expect when you're doing wholesaling? Okay. And from my years of experience, ladies and gentlemen, if you know what you're doing on the low end, you can earn $10,000 on average on the high end, you can easily exceed six figures. All right. In fact, uh, just about a month ago, one of our students made a deal out in the state of Maryland and was able to assign the contract for over $105,000, okay? And he was very excited about that, obviously. But, you know, it's a situation where the house was not wanted. One of the owners is in Europe. The other two don't want the house. And they sold it. They got it under contract for $315,000. We had an open house with 14 groups of people. And a total of six offers came in. And of course, we negotiate. Uh, he negotiated and and uh, and got the deal that was the best deal that was most likely to close. And they were willing to buy it for four hundred twenty thousand one hundred dollars for a total of one hundred five thousand one hundred dollars as an assignment fee. Okay, just imagine just doing one of those per year. Just one. All right, and you can probably take off the rest of the year. Okay, but if you're more ambitious, just do two. And maybe then take off the next two years, whatever you want to do. Okay, um, but those are the kinds of deals that you can do. But, you know, if you're not getting a six figure deal, that's OK. You know, if you're getting your four or five deals at twenty thousand dollars a piece, that's also a six figure income. And that's only one every other month. All right. So that's you know, this is very achievable. If you know what you're doing, have a system of consistency to market and to and go from there. Now, of course, how fast can you make this money? Immediately at closing, you don't need to wait for the house to be renovated and sold. You get the wholesale fee right there when the fix and flip investor settles on the property. So that means you get money faster and you can move on to the next deal, negotiate and do the process all over again. You don't take title to any property. You're not borrowing any money and you're risk free moving on to the next deal. OK, so here's a couple of examples. Okay, That's the theory behind everything. But let me show you guys some examples. Here's a deal that was done in the state of Virginia, northern Virginia. And a situation where the owner had a tenant living there for many years, but the owner lives in California. All right. Obviously, you know, the Pacific Coast, long distance, they don't want to fly back to take care of the property. The tenants left in a disrepair. Their house was also very outdated. All right. Uh, the ceiling height was very low in the basement, which could not be finished legally. And so, uh, so here's what happened. Okay. A real estate agent. Uh, already had this motivated seller in sight that was in their network. But for whatever reason, the motivated seller was a DIY type person and did not want to hire an agent to pay a 6% commission to sell the house. So what this agent did was he knew me. Okay. He knew me personally. And he so because he knew me personally, he connected me to the motivated seller. And I contacted the motivated seller and did a deal with them. And with there's no real estate agent commission whatsoever. And once the deal was done, we went ahead and paid a marketing consult fee to that person who gave that lead to us. So that way, hopefully he can do it again. OK, so here are the actual numbers of how the deal played out. You know, we ratified with the sellers at a purchase price of four hundred twenty five thousand dollars. We negotiated the EMD to one thousand dollars, made the contract assignable, and then we ratified a assignment at a sales price of $470,000. The total wholesale fee for this deal was $45,000. And here's a copy of the cashier's check to show $46,000 because we not only did we get the $45,000 assignment fee, we also got reimbursed a $1,000 deposit that we put on the front end of the contract. Okay. Now, this particular deal, I still remember to this day, took approximately 22 hours to complete. All right. And from begin to end, the moment I met the seller to negotiating, to writing the contract, to visiting the property, to doing the open house, to marketing it, and then to going to settlement all took roughly 22 hours and 22 hours at $45,000, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's, you know, pretty decent hourly wage. And you just do a couple of those every year. Again, you're good to go. All right. But let's say right now that a contract for whatever reason is not assignable. All right. An example of this would be if you got a property via a short sale, via an auction or via a foreclosure. OK, so when you're involving banks, generally they are re they are required that your contract is not assignable. So in other words, I can put the same contract on the property, but I cannot assign the contract the same way I did the previous one. So instead of assigning it, now what I have to do is what's called a double close, all right? Meaning that I buy the property, 
and I sell it again either the very next day or the next week or the next month without doing any renovations to the property whatsoever. In fact, you don't even need to turn the utilities on if you're doing a double close, okay? So here's how this works, okay? All right, here's an example. In um, This is in Southeast DC. All right, here's a house that had a lot of foundation problems. You see here's the pictures of cracks everywhere. All right, there's cracks everywhere. And of course, I'm not a structural engineer. I'm an engineer, but not a structural engineer to where I can say, okay, that's a hairline fracture or this is not, I'm sorry, hairline fracture. <laughs> uh, the, but uh, this is a crack that's structural. This is a crack that's not structural related, whatever it may be, okay? I couldn't determine that. But anytime someone sees a crack in the foundation, they get scared. So that's why we take pictures of it, okay? It's for negotiating points. All right, so here's what happened. You know, here's a property that um, that was on there on the MOS. All right, so you see here the asking price was one hundred thirty nine thousand dollars. Okay, so let me tell you the history about how this all happened. So, what happened was that I knew this real a real estate agent, and he was the listing agent for this property. He was already working with another buyer who made an offer of eighty five thousand dollars. When he made the offer of eighty five thousand dollars, short sale negotiations started taking place, and the the lender came back. And they approved a short sale uh, uh, purchase of one hundred thousand dollars. Now, because the bank approved at one hundred thousand dollars, which was fifteen thousand dollars more than what the buyer is willing to pay, they decided to guess what? They decided to back out. I have no idea why they want to back out, but they did. Okay, so the agent who had this issue knew me. He contacted me right away. Said, "Yan, I don't know why, but my buyer backed out. I need another contract right away. Cash offer. Can you do it for me? I said, absolutely. I looked at the deal online. I didn't even visit the property. I immediately wrote an offer for $100,000. All right. So our acquisition company is Fortune Homes. We went ahead and put an offer right at the get-go at $100,000. So what happened was that because you know the bank, which in this case was Bank of America, had a whole huge backlog, and they were not able to look at this case for about 9 to 12 months after my offer. So the market changed after nine months and they went back and took a look at what the house is worth, even though there's foundation issues and they countered back at a purchase price of $140,000. I disputed their value and I went back and said, you know what, we want to put an offer of $131,600, some kind of odd number that makes them think that we made some kind of a detailed analysis, but we really didn't. Okay. We just wanted to make a, a number less. Okay. Um, and they approved it at $131,600. Okay. So, so the short sale was approved, and here's what happened, okay? So we went ahead and marketed the deal to all of our end buyers, showing that after renovation, this house will be worth $400,000 after spending $100,000 of renovation. Our asking price was $210,000, okay? We held open houses, and had a whole bunch of end buyers walk through and make offers as they saw fit, okay? So here's what happened. You see Fortune Homes is our renovation acquisitions company, okay? We purchased for $131,600. We sold it to an investor, all right, for $215,000. And guess what? Six months later, they sold it for $400,000, just like we advertised, all right? So exactly right on the button because our ARV is correct and our renovation estimate was correct, which builds great credibility to fix and flip rehabbers, okay? So take a look though, um, guys. We had to hold this property for a month because under the terms of the acquisition for short sales, we had to hold the property for 30 days. Now, because the month of January is 31 days, we were able to close exactly on the 30th day on February the 3rd, 2016. Okay, so we held it for a month. And guess what? We still didn't put much money into it because we got what's called transactional funding. If you have a deal that's a good deal, ratified and ready to go, and you already have an end buyer lined up to buy it with strong proof of funds, then you can find a hard money lender or a private lender that will give you 100% financing to get that deal from one closing to the next closing. Okay, so so there's a lot of lenders out there that will do that. And let me show you the, the, the full numbers, okay? So the purchase price of $131,000, $600 with closing costs, transactional points, the total cost of closing, total financing, and our deposit, okay? So our deposit was $1,000, and we were required to bring $200 at closing. So we put in about $1,200, all right? We sold it for two fifteen. dollars Okay, so that was above asking price. There's closing costs on the uh, sales side. We have one month of interest on the loan. So the total proceeds were $208,000. And uh, the total payoff was one thirty-six. dollars all right, from the, the financing. 
along with some of the interest there. And um, and the total proceeds and profit was $72,000 and some change, all right? So the difference between double close and contract assignment is that in a double close, you take control of the prop and put the title under your name and you have transactional costs, which includes title insurance, taxes, and everything that you need to close on the property from both buying and selling the property. But you know what? If your spread is still $72,000, you don't mind paying an extra ten dollars or $12,000 of transactional costs, okay? So this was a killer deal, and I would do it again in a heartbeat, and you should too, all right, as a double close type deal. So, uh, so that's an example of an actual double close, okay? So let's move on to another example. This is one of our students from our academy. Uh, he found a house in Northern Virginia in Woodbridge. It was a one-level rambler. And um, he was able to get this deal because he met someone in our network at our mm -hmm. event. All right. When he met someone at our network, they didn't really know how to put the deal under contract, but he did because he attended our boot camp. So they worked together. She gave him the lead. He worked the lead. And then once the deal closed, he compensated her a little bit of a marketing consulting fee just for the lead as he worked the deal and got the deal under contract. Okay. So he was able to ratify the deal at $100,000 with a motivated seller. All right. And before settlement, for whatever reason, the seller left the water running and flooded the main level bathroom and the basement. They became very deceptive, even though there's picture evidence everywhere. So I was able to train my student to renegotiate the deal to get a better deal. So he got it down from $100,000 to a contract price of $90,000. And the end buyer purchased it for one fifty five. dollars And I know that because we were the end buyers. And this is a perfect example of how we work with our students. See, the best thing that I do, guys, is that I love seeing people succeed. And the best way to do that is equipping students like yourself, new students, to get the right system in place for them to generate leads. And then when they have a deal that fits the criteria and, by, and the formula and the system, then hopefully we can do a deal together to where we create a win-win. Okay. Um, in this case here, this was the very first deal. He put the house on the contract, but didn't really know how to work with the title company. So I work with him along the way to make sure everything on the title company is crystal clear and that the deal goes to closing. And honestly, he mentions that if it wasn't for us, the deal would never close because he had, there are a lot of things along the way that he didn't know how to figure out without someone to guide him along the way. Okay. So once again, guys, um, you know, we, you know, our academy is designed to help people get started. Um, of course, we charge a fee for the training. We charge a fee for the system that we put together. And we charge a fee for your commitment to attending boot camps and different things like that. But at the end of the day, you are a part of our team. So that way, hopefully, we can work together. The, the biggest money that we make is not charging training fees. The biggest money that we make are doing deals with our students, okay? So with that, guys, uh, that was our last example. So I wanted to go ahead and uh, turn it back over to Nicholas here to address any questions that you guys may have in the audience. So Nicholas, I turn it over to you. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So our first question is from Mr. Kevin McKenna. Uh, he asks, uh, can we put the contract in the corporate name instead of an LLC? A corporate name meaning a C corporation? And the answer is yes. But generally, that's not a common practice because in real estate, um, the common practice is using a limited liability company because a lot of times, you know, you have multiple projects, right? You have multiple. I mean, the only reason why you have a C corporation is for tax purposes. But for real estate purposes, it's more for asset protection. And that's why our attorneys always recommend using an LLC versus a C corporation. But there's nothing stopping you from putting a C corporation on the contract as well. Any entity can put something on the contract. Okay. Oh, he's, he mentioned S-Corp, not C-Corp. You know, yeah, any corporation, any inks, right? Whether the S-Corp or C-Corps, you, know, um, you know, any entity that's legal that has, has its own tax ID number, you can put that on the contract. Um, but what I do recommend is you don't use your personal name because you don't want your personal name to have any liability in case the contract or deal goes sour. Okay? Okay. Um, our next question is from Donna. She asks, <laughs> can we get a copy of your purchase contract? <laughs> That's a great question. That's why we have our academy. Now, we, the reason why we don't hand out contracts like that is because you need to be properly trained to use it. 
Uh, we spent thousands of dollars in the past several years with our attorneys to make sure that our contracts work in particular states. Every state has their own language, especially when it comes to lead-based paint, uh, HOA disclosures, and other different things that's pertinent to that state only. Uh, regardless of the, the unique language of each state, our contracts for each state are still only two pages, okay? So in our academy, if you go to yanlamacademy.com and you browse around at our standard subscription and premium subscription, uh, when you go through that training, the advanced modules will actually get you access to those contracts so that way you can use the proper contracts to put things on a contract. Now, in the presentation with the contract, by the way, you also learn how to present it. You know, just because you write a contract doesn't mean you get someone to sign it, right? <laughs> so there's certain salesmanships and presentation techniques that we train you on so that way the likelihood of getting the seller to sign it increases dramatically on how you present it and how you build rapport and build a relationship. All, all those things go hand in hand with getting a deal signed. It's not just the contract, right? It's the whole thing that falls in place even before the contract as you build the relationship with that motivated seller. Okay? So hopefully that helped out. Okay. And um, uh, Marlon is mentioning that he is a cash bar in, buyer and he has a POF and he can't find a good wholesaler. Well, look no further. We're it. <laughs> <laughs> so what you can do, if you want to be part of our end buyers list, then contact us at info at yalamacademy.com. And then what we'll do is we'll add you to our end buyers. And as we have deals in our pipeline that we personally market to, that we choose to wholesale. Now, a lot of deals that we come in, we choose to fix and flip them ourselves or keep them as rentals. But in the event that we choose to off uh, offload them to, to wholesale for a wholesale fee, then we'll advertise to that end buyer network and you can see the next email. Yeah, you know, once you add it to the email, then you'll see the next deal that comes up um, hopefully pretty soon. Okay. okay. Um, our also, we have another question from Donna. She asks, uh, what is our marketing plan? Great question. Um, so marketing plan can be very vague because there's so many different ways to get a qualified lead. And the way I like to present it is that if your, you know, if your skill set is particular to a way where your natural skills are good in specific areas, they focus on that area. So for example, some people are very good at inbound calls or outbound calls because they've had telemarketing experience, all right? And then some folks like me, where I was naturally introverted because I was an engineer, you know, that I couldn't do those things. So instead, I was very good at networking because as an engineer, I was good. At, I was already used to working with a team. So I'm used to building rapport, building a good relationship, getting them to trust me, and hopefully we can have a productive team-like working relationship. And that's the same approach I did with, uh, with, with um, real estate investing, okay? So in our academy, when you, in, when and if you want to learn our marketing techniques and register for the standard subscription or even the premium one, we go through about five or six different ways to market for deals that's very affordable. And once you're done understanding those four, the five or six ways of doing that, you can choose the, the maybe the, the, the top two ways and focus on that, the top two ways that you feel comfortable with the most without you having to learn any new skills. So that way you can get a deal as fast as possible. Okay. So the last thing you want to do is spend three months learning a new skill <laughs> instead of going out and using your natural born skills, natural born skills to get your first deal. And that's the biggest mistake of other training companies is they train you on all this nonsense. They overtrain you and you don't get anywhere for three months, but instead we want to focus on what you naturally already have. You choose the top one skill, the technique that you want to use, focus on that and then and then proceed from there, okay? So I can name a couple real quick, uh, Craigslist, Google Ads, Facebook, uh, networking, band and signs, door knocking, uh, canvassing uh, different neighborhoods. You know, those are all different things that we train in our modules in very detailed and even give you templates to do so, okay? Um, to target probate property, to target absentee landlords, to target um, all those different things where the likelihood of having a motivated seller is very high. Okay, so hopefully that was a very long-winded answer, but hopefully they answered the question. <laughs> okay, all right, our last question is from Angel, and she asks, sorry, give me a second, I lost it and I just had it. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah, she asks, uh, will you find a buyer regardless to the location of the seller? Will, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Will you find a buyer regardless to the location of the seller? The location of the seller. So meaning the location of the property or the physical location of the seller? Uh, so let me answer in both ways then. So okay. 
for <laughs> regardless of where the property location is, if the formula fits, we will find a buyer. All right. Um, now, as for the seller, the seller can be anywhere they want to be. They could be in Europe. They can be in Asia. They can be in South America. As long as there is a U.S. embassy to where they can sign contracts with and settlement documents that can sell a property. OK, so so the seller, the, the homeowner can be anywhere in the world. And they can still sell the property. They don't have to be physically back to sell the property. OK, all right. Okay. We, have, we have one more question, actually. It's from Naveen and they ask, uh, is double close the same as wholesale or wholesale? I'm assuming that they mean wholesale. <laughs> Great question. So it's this is similar but different. Uh, we're still buying, we're still getting the house on the contract and we're still giving it to a fix and flip rehabber. The only difference is that in wholesaling, assigning the contract, you are not taking title to the property. You don't buy the property whatsoever. All you're doing is selling the piece of paper, which is the contract. And it double close in an event where you cannot do that, you will actually have to borrow money from a lender who's going to give it to you at 100%. And you take title to the property and also get the insurance and everything for a day, a week, or even a month, depending on what the criteria are, and then you sell it to the end buyer once you're allowed to. Now, before you go to settlement, ideally as a double close, you would have already had an end buyer lined up with a ratified contract with the deposit already sent into the title company, so that way you know that they will perform. If that's the case, there's absolutely almost no risk to the lender and to yourself because that's already in place. And when someone puts money down as a deposit a title company the likelihood of them to close is very very high all right so uh so that's the difference between a double close and a wholesale okay right. it looks like that is our last question okay perfect well guys i really appreciate you guys asking these great and intelligent questions i'll tell you wholesaling is one of my favorite things uh, to do because it involves absolutely no risk and it's exciting to see the money sooner than later, okay? Uh, so with that, we do have a couple of announcements that I'm very excited about. And to go through those announcements, I'm going to turn it back over to Nicholas to go through the details and then also close out the event. So Nicholas, back to you, sir. Awesome. Okay, guys, like y'all mentioned, we have a couple of events coming up just to start off. So first off, we have an, we're proud to announce that we're having another boot camp and this is going to be covering uh, fix and flip uh, when our previous boot camp covered wholesaling. So this time uh, it is going to be on April 17th and 18th next month. That's both a Saturday and a Sunday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And we're going to have marketing strategies covered, asset protection, value analysis. And you're also going to get access to our proven tools, access to our proven contracts included when you register and also uh, purchase. And also you're, we're going to be covering um, what it takes to uh, get a 50k to 250k per deal at on average and also raising capital in addition to that we're also going to be providing you with renovation techniques permitting processes uh contractor management and resale process and you're probably wondering how much we're going to charge uh let me answer that for you so we are initially we're going to charge 1500 dollars. that's how much our in-person boot camps were uh before COVID happened because of all the catering and all the music and events that we had and such but this time, since we're having it virtual, we're bringing it back down to uh, $599, so $600. And if you want to check out more information on our website, go ahead and click the call to action that you see in the top of your screen um, and check out the more information that we have on there, okay? And if you do have any additional questions, um, don't hesitate to email us at info at youngmomacademy.com. We'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions that we have, or that you have, rather. And I just wanted to go over a few success stories that we've had previously. So our first gentleman here is Lee Johnson. Um, he worked uh, 60 to 80 hours a week at his full-time job, and then he started real estate investing part-time, and he still was able to get a deal of, of over $45,000. And he uh, got that from attending one of our boot camps uh, 30 days after that. Um, our second student from NLA is Mrs. Betsy Dimmick. She completed three deals in her first active year part-time, and she netted over $125,000. It's a lot of money, especially for part-time. And then our last student was Mr. Gene Gamble. Um, he, his original background was from in engineering, and he was very skeptical about the boot camp. However, once he attended, he got his first deal, and it, he netted over $110,000. So it, the success actually works, guys. It really does. So yeah, if you want to uh, be a part of that, definitely register for our boot camp. We highly encourage it, just so that you're able to have your uh, picture and name up here and have one of your own success stories. 
And lastly, we have our next free webinar coming up next month. It's going to be on Wednesday, April 14th uh, at 7 o'clock p.m. We're going to be covering how to estimate renovations. And if you want to register for that, go ahead and RSVP at our website, www.yanlamacademy.com. Just click on events and then hit free trainings. You'll see the April 14th date, and then you can register that way. So with that being said, guys, thank you so much again for coming to our webinar tonight. God bless. Have a good night. Stay safe and take care.